So hello everyone, uh, the last round of the candidates is currently in progress and we have some very exciting games that are going on. Um, so one game has already ended in a draw, uh, but that was not a very important game between uh, Aronian and Wesley So. So now uh, the focus shifts to the remaining three games. Uh, let us try to have a look at what's going on in those games. Who do you think has the best chance? By the way, uh, right now, I feel that uh, Karuana is the one who, who has the best possibility uh, of becoming a candidate right mm -hmm. now, based on the positions that we have on the board. But um, yeah, let's, let's have a look at the games one by one. First of all, I think the most interesting game of the day is definitely uh, Mamedyarov versus uh, Kramnik versus Mamedyarov. Because in this game, after a normal opening uh, Catalan, Mamedyarov who is black, over here, Queen d6 was played. And this is very interesting uh, because it's a very rare move. Usually, uh, Knight c6 is played in this position. But uh, Queen d6 was played by Mamed and uh, Knight a3, rook d8. The, the idea is to put pressure on the d4 pawn over here. Uh, and we have uh, a lot of uh, people uh, over here who, who, who are joining us. So, hello everyone. Um, today is the last round of the candidates and uh, it's going to be very, very, very exciting uh, because we will have a challenger to Magnus Carlsen. And the game which we are looking at right now is uh, Mamediaro Black against Ka uh, Kramnik. And here, uh, knight into c4. And, and the question is, what happens if you take the pawn on d4? Uh, if, if you were to take on d4, then I think uh, queen d4, rook d4 would give uh, Black an extra pawn, although white has compensation. You don't want to exchange the queens. But uh, let's say something like queen c2. And uh, <coughs> the feeling is that white has excellent compensation. He goes bishop e3, rook d1, the other rook could come to c1. So I have a feeling that in this position, uh, white would be better. So Mamediaro played queen a6. And these are the things uh, which you have to do in, in must win situations. You have to take risks. And that's what. Uh, Mamediaro is doing after queen c2, uh, the pawn is sacrificed on d4, and here bishop g5 was played. So, uh, well, the question is what is going to be the result of this? Uh, many people are asking who's going to win this candidate. I'm not so sure yet, the games are not very clear, but uh, if you look at it. Caruana seems to have the best chance because uh, after knight bd7 here, uh, rook d1. I feel that white has compensation, but after queen a5, um, it doesn't seem like he has enough for an advantage. You have this beautiful bishop on g2, the knight is also active. These are passive pieces, but uh, I'm sure that black will find a way uh, to to develop them. First of all, this is under attack. So I think uh, Kramnik played bishop f4 here. And now knight d5 was played. So uh, yeah, I would, I would like to welcome everyone, by the way, all those who are here, Sumed, Atri, uh, Akshat, Devesh, Nikhil, uh, so many people here, Archana. I think that's uh, Aryan Polakre. So a lot of people here, um, and here, I mean, black is threatening knight into f4. So what do you think uh, would be white's move? I have a very weird idea. I don't know if it's working, uh, but is it possible to just take knight into f7? Uh, because if you take here, I want to take queen into h7. But I don't think this should be enough because after knight f4, uh, g f4, you have queen f5. 
and and somehow the queen is just uh, in time to defend everything so uh, yeah naman hi uh, krishna kumar says why did fabiano choose petrov defense against e4 uh, is petrov having winning chances well i think petrov is a very solid opening and perfect for uh, fabiano <coughs> by the way let's just uh, end this at knight d5 and and uh, give an evaluation here i think that this position is is ex is interesting uh, maybe maybe uh, can take here ed but then that solves the problem of this bishop on c8 so if you don't take here uh, what else are you going to do uh there was a move being played here bishop e4 by by uh, mamediaro this has been played in the game and i would say good compensation for white uh so <coughs> here we have to check the game between grishchuk and karuana and the question is why did he go for the petrov i think karuana is sure that uh, Mamediarov might not win with uh, with black against Kramnik so he doesn't have to worry about that and secondly uh, Ding Liren and Kra uh, Karyakin also one of them has to win so in order to reach equal to Karuana if he draws and Karuana is in a good position he can draw his game or win if he wins he's obviously qualified but even if he draws he has good chances so in this situation i think petrov is a is a wise choice you don't want to play the sicilian or something because then it's like you're either playing for a win or uh, it's just completely uh, dangerous but petrov means uh, you keep the balance here by the way uh, d4 is <coughs> interesting i mean knight e e5 is the main move but uh, d4 was played by grishchuk and and we reached the uh, the position which was played in many top level games actually um, mamediarov uh, nepomniashi mamediarov already and here c3 and i uh, when i looked at this position after rook e1 queen d7 i had a feeling that black is fine you know uh, because in this position this pin is uh, is quite irritating and and uh, i thought to myself that white black can castle any time and it looks pretty okay but you know there are a lot of things that are that are going on for example h3 bishop h5 was played uh, in the game and here uh, bishop f4 by by grishchuk but uh, there was an interesting suggestion by amruta who said b4 here and and this is something which i think um, has to be looked at mm -hmm. And then this is a move which which should be considered. I don't know if Grishchuk looked into it. By the way, uh, who will Prabhat asks who will win if Karuana and Mamediarov and Karyakin have same points? Uh, if if all three of them have the same points, then it first of all it goes uh, head to head, uh, and uh, over there Mamediarov has has the best possibility because uh, he has a better head to head score. Uh, in general so i think uh, there is one very nice uh, thing which has been made online where you put in the results and and you get the uh, combination of who's winning and uh, who will win the candidates it's there on uh, chessbase.com and you can have a look at it um, <coughs> so b4 is is definitely one possibility and the idea is that after cb cb knight b4 uh, there is this interesting move e6 because if you take fe then i can go bishop f5 this is uh, interesting and after ef5 i can take bishop b4 and that's the point of the move b4 um, but grishchuk didn't play it and he went for bishop f4 here and that's uh, where we are right now in this position Mm, I think a few one more move has been played queen e6 by Fabiano uh, he has stopped e6 in this position and overall I think this is a very nice uh, interesting battle 
it might be around even but it's far from uh, drawish a lot of possibilities in the position again the question is is this something a pin that you have to worry about um, can you go g4 i think it's possible taking here makes no sense because i can just put my bishop back to g3 uh, and if you go back bishop g6 yeah it looks fine i mean at least i can't take here if i take then this rook gets activated so maybe uh, what grishchuk would be trying is to wait for black to castle and then try for g4 so that uh, after bishop g6 at least the rook won't be activated on the h file over here <coughs> so uh, this position is uh, i would say karwana is doing pretty okay over here so that's why i i have a feeling that karwana will not have too many troubles but it's a rich position so you cannot really say uh, what i would be interested also is in the game between uh, karyakin and ding liren it was a uh, ruy lopez d3 which is becoming so popular by the way i just want to share a small secret here uh, that there is also the move uh 5d3 and what i have read is that this move is less accurate than 6d3 because the bishop is still on f8 and so after d6 you can develop the bishop on g6 bg7 so that is why uh i think that uh, white players play castle and force the bishop first to develop and then play d3 Oops, sorry so b5 bishop b3 d6 and here a3 was played uh, by the way we we can remember that bishop d2 was played by karuana uh, yesterday uh, uh, when he beat uh, aronian with white so uh, d6 a3 and castle knight c3 I remember that uh, here there were a lot of possibilities but in the world cup Aronian played bishop g4 against Maxim uh, and uh, and got a very easy draw in the fourth classical game I think and uh, that's why Ding Liren has also opted for this move now it's very simple you know white is threatening black is threatening knight d4 to to pin the knight on f3 so you have to play bishop e3 there is no other option and then you still go knight d4 and after take take you go knight d5 so uh, it's kind of forcing moves and here uh, bishop rook uh, knight takes d5 bishop takes d5 was played in the game and then rook c8 by levon when when black got absolutely uh, fine position bishop b7 <coughs> is not possible because of rook b8 <coughs> and you can't take a6 because rook b6 so uh, knight d5 bishop d5 was not played here bishop uh, black went c5 so this is a new uh, new move a4 uh, bishop e6 and here we had this position and the question is uh, <coughs> who is better here uh, it's actually not so easy and it's a very nice imbalance with a with a knight against a bishop so uh, who's doing better is is pretty unclear here uh, i felt at first that white should have uh, chances because he has the e5 break and also a into b5 is in his hands when to play or not play uh, however uh, it's not so simple because after queen e2 queen d7 black is very solid and and that's why i feel that this game will be a draw it, it doesn't seem like anything is happening uh <coughs> so we have sundar who says hello good evening so welcome sundar uh, devesh nayak uh, says b3 here yes b3 was played and i think this is where it stands i was considering the move e5 here and then after you take if you take with the pawn there's also this uh, <coughs> knight d2 move uh, just a pawn sacrifice i want to place my knight on e4 with, where it's a beautiful piece um, 
looks very interesting but i think bishop e5 would be played and then after knight e5 d queen e5 uh, rook f5 might be possible and then you double the rooks here so black should be doing pretty okay d3 so karyakin wants to keep the tension he is the guy who has the strongest nose as we we discussed yesterday uh, devesh says white is slightly better here not so sure actually uh, whether white is better because uh, black at some points will have ideas like c4 in the position so i'm not 100% sure but it's a very good position to play for a win for for both sides because there is an imbalance here i mean if white had a, a dark squared bishop here on d2 then i would say most certainly it would be a draw but because it's a knight versus bishop anything is possible <clears throat> so i don't know if any more moves have been made in this game um yeah there have been a few more moves first one uh, being e5 okay that's a, that's a bit of a surprise because i thought that he would not want to um kind of limit the scope of his bishop but uh, maybe ding ding figures out that his bishop could always be activated from here <clears throat> arian says black played b4 rook a2 and b4 wow don't you think that black is taking too many chances here i mean <clears throat> knight d2 now the knight is coming to c4 i mean if i was not looking at an engine okay which i am not right now and i hope you too are not uh, then i feel that white should be doing really well because his knight on c4 would be very nice and then he would have the chance of playing maybe g3 f4 at some point i mean everything in this position revolves around white being able to do something so rook a8 was played by ding and knight c4 so just correct me if i am wrong um, what is your opinion i think that white is the one who will try here <clears throat> uh, shavinder singh says kramnik's game uh, there is move being made we'll go to that game very soon uh, <clears throat> kramnik once said that it might be his last candidates tournament uh, now after this bad tournament will he make a comeback again <laughs> i'm not so sure uh, actually speaking um, i don't believe chess players would ever l leave chess actually i mean uh, they are they are so much addicted to it i think kasparov was an only exception otherwise most of them keep playing for their entire life even karpov with all these uh, commitments in the politics and all is still coming back to the board playing his game so i'm not sure if kramnik would give it up just as yet uh <coughs> many people are uh, saying that that this position might be good for white well yeah i i feel so and uh if if white is given to put his knight from b6 to d5 nothing like it you know uh, that knight would be really really nice over there so maybe ding will play bishop d8 stopping that move perhaps uh and he has uh he has played it yeah and now rook a1 was no, played ah knight c4 was not played so rook a1 bishop d8 anyway i think karyakin is going to grind out for his life here i mean he's <laughs> he's going to keep playing he's going to make ding suffer uh for a long time here uh by the way there was someone who said uh i made a very good dvd mm -hmm. chess art who says a very good dvd you made learn from classics thank you so much i think uh, it was a very nice uh, <coughs> uh topic in general and i i hope that many of you do study the classics because uh, it is very important to do so yeah well, aryan says uh, white will push throughout yeah i agree and also amit pande uh, is of the same opinion um no so this is one game i think we looked at all the games uh, the three games we're not going to check aronian versus wesley so because oh, that was kind of inconsequential so a quick look at uh, mamedyarov versus kramnik uh, 
sorry Kramnik Mamediaro bishop e4 g6 and now bishop h6 yeah was played in this position yeah and queen c5 so <clears throat> Mamediaro is trying to somehow exchange pieces and hope that he can hold it like for example if I take take and bishop d5 I think uh, I've already recovered the pawn <coughs> but then my advantage is kind of reduced because black goes say bd6 and then puts the other bishop on e6 over here so in that sense uh, it's not going to be so, such a good idea I'm sure Kramnik is not going to exchange the queen so easily he's going to put pressure here so guys uh, <coughs> what I'm going to do now is just take a take a short break and come back uh, in another half an hour at nine o'clock um, when we will discuss the games further because I want to uh, really uh, analyze the games also give you some good inputs into it and uh, that's why if you have any questions do keep this going the link will remain the same where you can follow but join me again at nine o'clock um, there were very very nice um, comments uh, over here like Farid who is from France uh, that's wonderful Farid welcome from France and Krishna Kumar Bagel who uh, said very very uh, kind words about me being a good analyzer so thank you so much uh, Krishna and um, <coughs> yeah okay so let's mm -hmm. let's meet in half an hour from now and we will discuss the games further when it will get more interesting uh, so stay tuned and uh, see you on the same link again so welcome back everyone uh, I hope that <coughs> you all had some time to think over the games a uh, lot of interesting things happening but I think uh, one uh, move that simply takes the cake for this round is uh, the move that Ding Liren played over here g5 I mean really very very interesting move <coughs> and uh, well, it's just like, you know, Ding Liren played the move b4 here and I was like, why would he play b4 giving the c4 square for his knight? But then he explains it by the move g5 that he doesn't want his attention to be shifted onto the queen side at all. So he's fixed that part over there and now he's actually... Uh, just looking to play on the king side which is uh, a very interesting strategy actually uh, so <coughs> g5 knight c4 uh, rook to e6 and a5 so at some point he would want to jump knight b6 i think that's the idea of a5 rook f6 is played and i think sooner or later white has to play something like f3 here uh, in order to not let the rook settle on on f3 for example if you play some random move let's say rook e1 just for the sake of argument I play rook f3 and then if you go knight d2 I could very well play g4 and then you cannot take because then you would be in trouble my queen would enter here so uh, it doesn't seem uh, very good for for white uh, over here so karyakin has to go i think f3 here i don't know if he's already played it uh, but that's the move which he would be thinking about the other interesting game here uh, yeah so the other interesting game we we're looking at is uh, Kramnik uh, very interestingly not taking or because Queen d2 was played in the game and then Mamediaro seemed happy with the draw you know he was repeating moves very very surprising uh, by Mamediaro he's hoping that Karuana will, lo will lose but this is the thing about Mamediaro you know in one of uh, one of the um, games in 
I think Tata Steel against Gawain Jones, he just repeated out of the opening and accepted a draw. Uh, and here also, when he has a chance to play the title match against uh, Carlsen, he is just accepting a draw. But Kramnik is, is having none of it. He plays Queen to D3. He wants to win. That's true about Kramnik. He's played 13 uncompromising games of chess. So he figures out why not one more you know let's let's finish this tournament with all games that you have fought uh, queen d3 and i think uh, in that position after queen d3 queen d6 was played and white went knight c4 queen c5 so the question is does uh, white have something here or uh, is he going to agree to a draw very soon? I, I don't think that White should because he has, first of all, he can take this. I, I don't like it, but um, because then Bishop e6 and Black is doing excellently in this position. But instead of taking on d5, um, you could do something else as well because now the back rank is weak. So I'm, I'm thinking about something like knight e3, but of course you can always solidify the knight further with c6. Point was that you, if you play here, uh, I would like to give this check. And after bishop f8, I don't know, maybe take on f8, queen f8, yeah this this may be okay I don't know uh, but there's some some things that could happen in this way uh, however yeah it's Kramnik's move over here so uh, Rohan Kore is saying wow Indian live commentary I like it that's great Rohan welcome to the show uh, yeah Aditya says knight e5 and queen f3 yeah it's interesting but uh, knight e5 Queen d6 is playing uh, and you don't have time for queen f3 because this is hanging. Uh, in general, you might not want to play f4 here uh, to fix the knight, although it might not be such a bad idea after all to play the move f4. You will have to think about moves like queen c5 and then the queen coming to e3. So. I think that's the reason why uh, Kramnik is taking his time. He has nothing actually to gain here. He could very well take a draw, uh, but uh, well, he's a fighter. There have been a lot of uh, lot of fun that has been made of him <coughs> in this event uh, for playing uncompromising chess, being uh, very very, uh, you know, like in the in the press conference, always saying that he's winning or better. But uh, I think he's played some very interesting chess in this event. Mm. Yeah, what about the edge pawn push plans? That's true. Uh, but first, let's say if you are able to solidify your position here. Now h4. Yeah, that seems like interesting for sure. Uh, because uh, what is it that black will do here that is the question maybe he will try to develop bishop d7 and then uh, h5 yeah you continue your play seems very interesting for sure because i i was thinking of knight b4 but first of all i have queen c3 and also uh, knight b4 queen d8 is a possibility here so yeah h4 h5 looks good uh, rajdeep das says what do you think who will win today well i have a feeling that somehow um karyakin is going to really press in that position with white over here against uh, ding liren so he seems to have some chances <coughs> and uh, yeah this is the position karyakin ding liren uh, this is what I feel um, is going to be at least a tough task for Ding to to fight on. That's what I feel. Uh, apart from that, uh, the game between 
over here they are we, we are following the game between Karuana and uh, Grishchuk is not really sure I mean a3 was played here yeah and then castles b4 h6 so this seems very even to me uh, at least from for now um, but but there is a lot of play I in the position and after uh, I think h6 bishop g3 was played in the position so yeah I'm, I'm this position looks equal but not drawish by any means so anything is possible here so we have interesting games that uh, the candidates is still going on Magnus Carlsen just tweeted saying 70% chance of winning to Caruana um, Omkar says uh, there is a book how to deal with H pawns yeah, which book is it Omkar can you tell us and uh, Aditya Srivastava says uh, very slim chances for Karyakin yeah I agree with you Ding is an excellent defender uh, but you know this last round too much of pressure and tension a uh, new territory for Ding Leren while Kramnik uh, Karyakin has already faced such a thing last year so you you never know mistakes happen in such tense situations uh, Vishwajit says um, Karuana will win tournament yeah I think right now I also feel Karuana is the is the favorite but uh, yeah if if in case uh, Karuana draws his game uh, over here and uh, Karyakin wins I know that uh, you guys are not uh, for this you think that uh, Karyakin will draw his game against Ding Leren but uh, but if Karuana manages to somehow draw and uh, after that if Karyakin wins then in that situation um, I think uh, there, there are chances I think one second I need to just uh, it's very confusing who, who will win uh, if Karuana draws then Karyakin wins I think uh, the head to head between both these two players comes into the picture and if I'm not mistaken uh, it would be uh, Karyakin who would who would have better chances uh, because he beat uh, Karuana yeah it's just uh, I'm, I'm sure maybe you could help me Karuana who's my favorite uh, personally I I don't know I mean I want Fabiano to play against uh, uh, yeah I mean I want Karuana to face Carlson and then that would be very interesting for me to see uh, by the way I'm just uh, checking out uh, something over here between what has been the result between Karyakin and Karuana uh, yeah Karyakin has a head-to-head -head win he won the 12th round against Karuana uh, yes it was this very nice exchange sacrifice of course so if Karyakin somehow wins he will win the candidate so very very good chances for Karyakin uh, well at least I think if Karyakin gets a chance uh, it would be same old thing again so I'm, I'm hoping that Karuana will be the challenger at least something new for for all of us to witness um, J Jas Hora says uh, Magnus would easily crack Karuana <coughs> uh, that's a very uh, blunt statement to make I'm not so sure but uh, let's see by the way very interesting stuff going on in Karyakin uh, versus Ding and uh, that's why I, I really like that game somehow Ding Liren who has been really solid in this event uh, is going for an attack as, as we discussed f3 was played and now h5 so Ding Liren is saying I'm going to go g4 no, sorry uh, at some point g4 or I'm going to try for h4 um, yeah I know that you have a beautiful knight here so what are you going to do about it <laughs> it's an interesting question because what are you going to do are you are you going to play um, knight b6 here okay you must take and then this pawn is weak but then uh, again queen b5 and I think you're losing this pawn maybe Karyakin 
would want to go for something like this but he cannot free his rook from f1 because f3 is hanging so if you can't use your two rooks on the queen side open a file then what is the point you know to to sacrifice this uh, so omkar says we need indian candidate sagar please take it seriously well uh, right now anand seems like the only hope for for india candidate uh, for the next candidates if you look at it that way uh, hari krishna well maybe he has good chances but if you looked at look at him in the world cup he got knocked out in the second round with it seems a little bit inexperienced for now not played many super tournaments adiban is always confident but again inexperienced so maybe to get our next candidate would take at least uh, Four to six years, but uh, perhaps Anand is uh, still going strong. You know, so he has a he has good chances. So Nitin says it's not possible to beat Ding Liren in this tournament. <laughs> yeah, <coughs> he has been playing really solid chess, <coughs> but uh, last round, yeah, he wants to play for something here. So H four, he's played H five. and karyakin is uh, still thinking for his move by the way a very interesting uh, thing has happened in the game kramnik versus mamedyarov uh, as what uh, one of our uh, readers had suggested i think it was aditya shrivastav who who said that in this position here kramnik should try to go queen f3 so i think we reach this position and knight e5 queen f3 was the idea but kramnik goes for queen f3 straight away wow that's interesting uh what what exactly is the idea so if you take <coughs> queen takes c4 is that not a free piece i think he wants to take rook into d5 yeah that looks uh the most logical okay uh we have some people uh who who are saying um, pragnananda has a chance to be the candidate well i personally think pragnananda will be candidate or even the world champion but if you if you're talking about this in 2 years he's too young yeah i mean is yet to become a grand master so talking about him getting to the candidates is a little bit too soon uh <clears throat> but he will do it one day about vidit as i just said uh, you need in order to reach this uh, and fight against these players you need to play super events and that is why vidit will play tata steel masters next year he will start getting his experience and and i'm sure he also has great chances but again in 2 years maybe not so easy chess art says <clears throat> i am from pakistan and i want to see <clears throat> sorry very sorry for that i want to see anand to win the champion at least once more that's very nice chess art and i'm glad that uh, someone from pakistan is watching the stream as well um i know mahmud lodi who's who's a great player from pakistan and i am with 2 gm norms but pakistan has not really created uh uh not not really created many grand masters actually uh, so any grand master so i hope that chess will develop over there uh krishna kumar says when will you become a gm i mean for me i think there's much more important things yeah pragnananda has to become a gm nihal sarin has to become one uh i can of, of course uh, think about becoming at any time but if you look at it there's a lot of work in chess uh, journalism chess promotion that has to be done and uh, it seems much more important right now so we have much more uh, comments coming in saikat says kramnik versus carlson would have been interesting yeah but that's that's not uh, happening um karwana and karyakin would be bored to defeat simply by by carlson well <laughs> uh okay maybe uh so 
Nagesh T says, uh, my coach has always says that I'm not that much focus in game. In his word, I'm search for tactics in every position. Even myself, I'm unable to think about big goals. How can I solve my problem? Well, Nagesh, I think the main problem you have is uh, maybe lacking self-confidence. So it's very important that you kind of believe in yourself. That's the most important thing, I think, in chess. Um, for example, I've seen that if you put two people together at the same time, one is very good uh, in knowledge. Uh, the other one has decent knowledge, not so great, but has great confidence. Uh, most often, the second person tends to perform well because chess being a sport, confidence plays a very big part in it. So I feel that first of all, you need to believe in yourself if you want to do anything in chess. Okay, so uh, first of all, we had queen f3 move here. I think Shakri or Mamediaro is still thinking because now uh, after queen f3, if you think about it, if you just give the move to your opponent, uh, white's move again, he will play knight f3, I think, uh, knight e5, and then uh, f7 would be kind of loose, and you don't want to push your pawn. That would create some huge weaknesses around the king. So I, my calculation is going uh, in this direction, queen into c4. And now, what's happening? That's the question. Rook d5. So you have a kind of exchange two knights. Is that a good news or a bad news for, for both sides? This bishop is just horrible. How can I activate it? That is the question. So can I can I go for a move like uh, e5 here? I'm just thinking out loud. It doesn't seem particularly great, but I just want to like, develop my bishop like this. And uh, perhaps I get something here, uh, perhaps not, mm, I'm not so sure. Um, yeah, maybe maybe something is happening. Bishop into b7 could be possible, but <laughs> but I think Black has to do something like this uh, in order to to activate his c8 bishop. Otherwise, it's just too passive. Okay. Uh, yeah, pawn cannot take. Susan Acharya from Nepal has joined in. Hi, Susan. Namaste. He says, uh, great to have you here. Uh, it's it's a kind of a beauty of this is that. People from so many different countries have have come here uh, to watch, and that's that's the beauty. We have Nepal, Pakistan, we had France, uh, so that's really cool. Nihal and Pragnananda. That's some what people are discussing here. That's the match of uh, the future for sure. I, I'll tell you that ten years from now you will be seeing these two guys at the top. Um, the discussion was immediately in the next two years. I think it's too early for them. So, yeah, okay. Uh, Omkar has suggested some moves. He says that after knight c4 in this position, uh, queen f3 was played, and now rook d5 to try for e5, I guess. Uh, take bishop here and now bishop d5 if i'm not mistaken this is what you are suggesting um yeah but if i take here it seems okay for black maybe maybe this is not what you are suggesting uh, now nit singh says do you still think pragnananda has chance to <laughs> become the youngest gm no, he does not because he's already surpassed that. Uh, it was 8th of March was the last deadline and it's already 18 days ahead of time. Uh, next, he was playing some close tournament in Germany, if I'm not wrong. Um, Sandeep Chaudhary is here from Germany. Hi, hi Sandeep. Uh, that's great to have you here. Ah, rook d8. That's what you're suggesting here. Rook d8. Ah, that's a nice move. Take and bishop d5. That's that's a cool <coughs> move uh, by by Omkar. You see, this square is guarded. So now, queen into f7 is coming. So yeah, e5 doesn't work. 
and how else are you going to develop this guy here I mean you really need to find a way otherwise um, I don't know I'm just look at these pieces so active so I think Kramnik is is doing really well here uh, let's look at some other games I think Fabi's game uh, might be interesting by the way something very exciting has happened in Karyakindin but okay we'll come to it first Fabiano we haven't checked that much but it's a slow moving game actually I think Fabiano Grishchuk is one of those games where Grishchuk is going to come under tremendous time pressure and then something all hell is going to break loose towards the end um, so we had bishop f4 queen e6 a3 castle b4 h6 bishop g3 b6 solid chess by Caruana he's not giving his opponent an inch right now very solid play I like it uh, actually um, yeah I think Fabi will will be doing pretty well uh, in this uh, this position is, is no problem for him so let's go back to to the most interesting game uh, for me today that is Ding Liren versus uh, Karyakin I, I really like the way in which both the players are fighting it out giving their all uh, and and guys keep your questions coming in uh, happy uh, attacking king says hi I'm from Bangladesh wow that's amazing uh, and chess art says uh, I hope you make more DVDs in Hindi and Urdu yes that's something we are definitely thinking about uh, Hindi more regional uh, languages in chess so that many more people can uh, can benefit by the way you should check out chess base India Hindi page on Facebook that we have recently created uh, that would give you some nice insights um, so f3 h5 we saw knight b6 was played in the game by the way uh, and actually I had said you are forced to take that knight but uh, Ding Liren was not so impressed he said well I'm going to just move my queen away and you you can be welcome to take the d5 square for your knight I don't care h3 was played wow that game is becoming really sharp now Ding Liren because if you were to take huh so I'm thinking first of all g4 is one possibility of course you don't want to get your king out in the open like this that's a mate for sure you don't even need to analyze uh, but if g4 you don't if you take this is hanging here on on uh, f1 and otherwise if you go back then I take g into f3 wow interesting so t so oops sorry I just uh, jump to the line um, yep coming back so you don't take on h3 I think it's not possible but if you don't and if you come back King g1 then rook into f3 rook into f3 Queen into f3 Queen takes rook takes and what's this position what do you think because a5 is also a bit of weakness knight on d5 is majestic I mean I love that knight but uh, what do you think about this position who seems to be better over here yes uh, this is the game by the way this is the game between uh, Karyakin white and Ding Liren who is black so for all those who are asking uh, Vishwajit Dongle says Karyakin is losing really he's losing I don't know if this end game is, is bad for him yeah his king is kind of cut off uh, but I'm also thinking even if you play rook f1 here is this end game so bad I mean you would be two pawns down it should be lost yeah I, I don't think this this is good enough to survive uh, for sure so uh, doesn't seem so great and um, yeah Sahil Tiku says did Karyakin sacrifice this pawn or did he blunder Sahil I think that it is a blunder for example uh, h3 here what is he thinking I mean did he miss something like for example king h3 let me just check it once this looks 
finish game over i think um, just to be sure yeah take this and now how do you win queen d7 looks like a, a deadly shot you don't let the king go in and then i think this is there are lots of ways now for example king h5 queen h7 and then rook g6 seems over uh, mate so that's that's over so you can't take the pawn on h3 and uh, king g1 yeah this is the position in uh, debate take 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 yeah and uh, the question is i think black is better for sure now at least uh, he can bring his king in but maybe if karyakin doesn't exchange the rooks let's say he just keeps moving his bishop uh, rook here rook a2 rook a1 then it might be interesting but uh, yeah g4 is also a big threat in this position to activate the bishop from g5 so you might have to play g4 as white yeah but overall it has turned uh, the game has turned uh, 180 degrees sahil uh, tiku says the rook on a1 is tied to defending a5 so at best he can just hold the game for now yeah that's true um Cyric London says, why is Howard Staunton not participating in this tournament? I think uh, maybe because he's dead. Uh, but, but, okay, uh, he's the guy who, who developed these uh, chess pieces. You know, I ever wondered earlier they were using these different sort of pawns and queen and, you know, mm, bishops look different, queen used to look different. But Staunton came and said, I would like the chess pieces to look as they are right now and then fide agreed to take those pieces as the standard pieces and today that's why we use the knight as a horse and a bishop looks like this thing um, pointed thing so all this is done by staunton um yeah krishna kumar bagel says i'm th around 30 years government professional 1550 fide rated i really want to improve my chess and my dream is 2400 is it too late or I still can. I think uh, I I answered this question yesterday, which was like, there's no age actually where you can improve in uh, where you cannot improve in chess. I mean, you can always. But the problem is, the more the older you get, the more responsibilities you have, the more tensions you have, and that's the reason why uh, it's not so easy for you to just put all your focus into chess. And if you can manage to do that somehow, if you have a good job and you are able to focus two, three hours daily on chess, play good tournaments, uh, travel a lot, then, well, I have absolutely no doubts that you can become 2400. But practically, it's not possible. It's not feasible always. So that's the reason why I feel it's not easy. Vinayak Sutar makes a very good observation that all the eight black pawns are on the board right now. Yeah, that's a nice observation. Um, yeah, so how many of you think it's going to be Ding Liren versus uh, <laughs> Ding Liren versus uh, Carlson? I think there was one scenario where uh, Ding Liren could qualify if. Uh, Karuana loses, uh, Mamediaro draws, Karyakin loses, of course, against Ding. Then Karuana, Mamediaro, and Ding Liren all are tied on 8 points. So Mamediaro drawing is a possibility, <coughs> and uh, Karuana losing also. And then Ding Liren wins the title because the first tie break head to head score is beaten uh, Mamediaro and drawn against everyone else. So, yeah, he has chance uh, over here. Okay, uh, any more moves that Karyakin has made in this position? Yes, King G1 was played and Rook into F3 has been taken. So, guys, this is interesting. I am going to look forward to this end game and then see what, what happens. Uh, and <clears throat> one more game which we have to focus our attention on is Kramnik Mamediarov. C6 has been played there. 
So, if you just remember this position here, Kramnik Mamedyarov, <coughs> yep, uh, coming back <coughs> here, Knight c4, and yeah, Queen c5, and Queen f3 was played here, and then c6. So this was played by Mamedyarov. So he is kind of <coughs> solidifying his knight. Now the question is knight e5. What do you do? I think so. That looks good. <coughs> Pushing the f pawn might be necessary because uh, knight f6 is a possible move. But I'm not sure, so sure here. I mean, if you open up this uh, file for the rook, it's going to be quite dangerous. The concretely, I am not able to see a clear-cut way here. Um, maybe bishop g. Okay, e5 is hanging for now. So yeah, maybe knight g4 so that I can get that knight off the board if if i can get the knight out of there then i get this file really uh, for free uh just preet singh says which software do you use for screen recording uh, uh well i'm using uh, right now chessbase 14 and uh, there are a lot of uh, different softwares for recording uh, obs is one of uh, pretty popular ones okay um Ankush says, is a6 pawn a weakness? If so, how can white attack it? I think you're talking about the game Karyakin, Dingleren. a6 might not be such a big problem right now, but it is surely a weakness because the knight can always from d5 go to c7 and attack it. Uh, Omkar says, Kramnik's play is very impre uh, ins inspiring yes i i agree with you he has been playing quite inspiring chess uh, in this event but uh, yeah will he be able to break through here that is the question so c6 is the position that we have on the board and uh, bishop d3 was played by kramnik so he, he just kind of defends this and later on he might be looking for e4 I'm a tad biased to White's position here. I think he has very good active plans and this is not looking good for Black overall. Dhruvil says, it's the first time Anand is not in the candidates and world championship. Yes, it's true. It's uh, After a long time, he's not there. But the good news is that because he's not in the candidates, he's playing the Olympiad. Uh, and, and the world championship because otherwise he is always preparing for his world championship and so in a way it's not good news that he's not Anand is not playing uh, in the world championship but the good news is that he is uh, here uh, for the Olympiad team and it's a big big thing for, for Indian chess. What Tanmay Das asks what do you think Giri seconding Kramnik has helped or backfired. I think uh, at the start we all felt it's an invincible team. Uh, they called him Kramnish I think or what was it? Yeah, Kramnish, the team of uh, Kramnik and Giri. But uh, I think uh, overall it hasn't gone so well because Kramnik is really playing uh, risky chess i mean as a second what is giri to do because kramnik is in really um, different mood over here he wants to play attacking chess and and that's when mistakes do happen you lose games so i don't think uh, giri's presence has actually if, if it was anything he she should have played more theoretical more solid chess but that's not being seen here so i'm not sure if it has helped Okay, um, yeah, okay, let's try to see the game between uh, Kram Karyakin and Ding Liren. By the way, Ding Liren is playing very quickly, so all of his moves. 
and uh, rook into f3 was played by the way over there in this position h3 king g1 rook takes f3 and now g4 immediately was played so uh, this is what has happened and actually speaking what is happening if i take 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 and take on a5 over here is this one extra pawn for me <coughs> or not really because knight f6 check king f7 i don't see where your knight is going from here and knight e7 check king f7 again i don't see anything particular yeah h3 is going uh, that's true that's what um, everyone thinks here h3 for example king f2 bishop d8 king g3 the question is will black have any chances here to win he's a pawn up in this position but seems difficult doesn't it um i don't know maybe the knight is dominated in a way so i could think about going king here here and then a5 a4 so let's say king e6 king g3 king d7 so on the king side nothing much can be done so you can go here king back king e2 king b5 king d2 a5 king c1 a4 even king b2 i mean allowing you to actually play a3 and lock my king here forever how do you win this position because the bishop has no scope the king has no entry point so that's what i think kramnik is banking on uh, sorry karyakin is banking on so you can't exchange everything it's a good point actually uh, if you take everything and you play f5 a4 uh, still it's not going to be useful yeah no break in the position uh Krishna Kumar says thank you Sagar for your suggestion but I will try it with the help of nurture chess base india and quality chess india yes thank you so much uh, Krishna I'm I'm sure that uh, if you keep working on chess there will come a time when you will get the desired breakthrough but the important thing is to keep working hard lot of people just are looking for results they want to get their rating up they want to pump up their rating but actually they don't really want to work hard so if you if you can do that first step at least you will have chances to to improve uh sandeep choudhury says this looks like a draw well not so soon because what we are discussing is already exchange of rooks but this is the position so but but yeah everything is going to get exchanged here so this looks like a draw and then we should look at this move by karuana by the way very very interesting move uh, that he played um by by grishchuk actually uh he played over here knight d4 actually let's just have a look at that game which is a very interesting move uh where is yes um trying to find grishchuk versus 4e5 knight f3 knight f6 yeah this is the game and here what we have we we had reached this point and now knight d4 all of a sudden was played by grishchuk and uh yeah you cannot really save the bishop because you cannot defend it so he took here and now knight e6 
f e6 because rook on f8 is hanging and now rook a d1 and we have this position on the board so guys what do you think here this is the game that is going to determine who will become the candidates according to me um, yeah Vinayak Suthar asks me, do you speak Marathi? Oh, of course, me Marathi bolu shakto, maji bai ko Marathi ahe. So my wife is Marathi, of course I can speak Marathi. We speak in Marathi all the time. So, uh, uh, Aryan Polakre, uh, what do you think about this position? Do you think that white is going to press on here or Karuana has very good equality here? That is the question. I think one of the golden rules when you have when your opponent has two bishops is to exchange one of them if you can do that you are bound to be safe so one plan could be bishop g5 to f4 to exchange one of the bishops yeah um, vinayak sutar says drawish uh, adriano says karwana can play c4 yeah for sure c4 but then b4 pawn you need to take care i don't know exactly when um, Vishwajit Dongle says I'm Marathi too. Maybe we we should have something in Marathi soon. By the way, as I always have said in the past, uh, there's one of our uh, users here, Omkar, who has a very nice channel in Marathi, Omkar Chakradev. Do check it out. Uh, he has some good Marathi lectures. Um, <coughs> Satish Garg says White is better. Bishop pair. Yeah, that's true. Bishop pair, but this bishop doesn't look very happy right now maybe f3 at some point and get this bishop to f2 could change things but uh, yeah Aryan says black will equalize I think uh, which is bishop one which is better one rook and two bishops Tamizan well here we have just a bishop versus knight that's the imbalance here so if I were black let me think what would I do here? Mm. Yeah, you you would want to actually make use of the f file. The bishop on d3 is very strong. Ooh. Not so easy to understand how exactly. I mean, you could think of moves like rook c8, which are just normal moves, but. Uh, I want to do something concrete a5 if I'm not a big fan of because then b5 and my knight doesn't get the a5 square then you get more space in the position uh, yeah, bg5 I guess looks interesting uh, I want to play my bishop to f4 at some point <coughs> yeah <coughs> So, uh, yeah, Aditya Srivastav says, I think Karyakin and Karuana will face problems against Magnus over the course of 12 games. I think overall, uh, everyone is going to face problems <coughs> against Magnus, that's for sure. But uh, as you say, Mamed Yaro won't face, I don't agree because Mamed Yaro has had really bad scores against Magnus in the past. So. I don't uh, think that Mamediaro is such a great opponent. By the way, Kramnik has been playing on uh, and we have had some moves. Uh, Karwana has made the very uh, kind of, uh, he has defined the pawn structure with the move c4 and now bishop c2. Okay interesting do you think that he will play now b5 hoping for a5 here at some point but i have a feeling that it will be met with a4 straight away interesting this is this is getting interesting uh, c4 move bishop c2 was played Okay, too many questions here, so I cannot pick up uh, many of them, but let's talk about this position now. Uh, Bishop c2 was played here. Why did 
Caruana plays this move c4. The square is now weak, but you have white has no knight, so it looks okay. Maybe he's thinking of rook a d8 and thinking of playing d4. Um, when after b5, knight a5 looks okay. But then you have bishop c6, bishop a4 anyway, so yeah, I think b5 might be played and then a4 and then a6, something like this will happen. And then f3, just to put the bishop on f2, rook a d8. This is my, just I'm trying to think in terms of bishop f2 and d4 is stopped. At least I guess it stopped. Maybe it is not because still <coughs> d4 is possible, and then b4 pawn would be hanging. I think Karuana is doing not so bad. At least I don't have. Uh, Aditya Srivastava says yes, my idea. Did you say c4? Then yes, that's what he played. Um, Sayak Ghosh says I'm Bengali. Play say uh, say something for Bengali fans. Well, I was just thinking today that I have so many good friends in Bengal. Uh, I don't know why, but I just feel that Bengali people are very nice. Uh, Surya Shekhar Ganguly, um, Nisha Mohota, Shahid Ahmed, so many people from Kolkata, Nilot Paldas, uh, just uh, seem like uh, very close friends, Sandeepan Chanda. I don't know, something about you guys really sweet, maybe just like uh, the sweets that you guy ha guys have over there, very tasty ones. Uh, so, great, great uh, state, great people. Yes, uh, YP Wines, hello, hi. Thanks for joining in. Uh, so, guys, what do you think over here, this position? It looks, at least after Bishop C2, as if Karuana has something <coughs> to think about. Uh, he has played b5 as just mentioned, so he is looking for the d4 break. And first, he is looking for a5. So let's assume if you play f3 or maybe f4, then a5 will be strong, I think. So we will, uh, I think I should be taking a short break now uh, and coming back. Ankesh is here. Great. Uh, this is excellent. Uh, to see you Ankesh and um, Prudvi says, do you think Karyakin will win? Well, as far as I could see, he was two points down. So winning is out of question, but will he be able to hold? That is the point. So uh, coming back to Karyakin's game over here. G4. King g7 was played, I think, in the game. Rook f3, all exchanges. And he gave up this pawn. So I think, mm -hmm. as we had discussed, this should end in a draw. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I think this is a draw. Um, King f6. There's no way to break this, I guess. It's just a draw. Even if. I even if white just puts his keeps his knight here and then i just keep my king on the queen side wh what are you going to do this thing over here is packed up you cannot touch these mm -hmm. things here these four pawns they are packed and uh, remaining you can just bring your king side on the king from there so as we had discussed even if you are able to get a5 a4 and even mm -hmm. a3 I'm just going to keep my king here. So it looks like a draw, yeah? Maybe we have Amruta here who has some interesting insights. He played 97. Yeah, this looks like a draw in general. So, uh, Aditya Srivastava says, I think Karyakin and Karuana will be similar strikes for Carlson to deal with. Yeah, okay, let's, that's true. I mean, Mamedyarov is different style, but Right now, it seems Karuana has the best chances. H3 falls. Yeah, H3 is falling here, but even if I don't take it. No, there it is a possibility for black. So okay. Yes. How is it possible for black to improve here? 
I don't know. I mean, how are you going to improve the position? I see the only way bishop d8. is that yeah, you keep your bishop on d8 and then take your king to b5. Where you will keep your king? I'll be just keeping my king on the queen side, like c c1, b2, somewhere over there. Um, king d7, king c6. Yeah, yeah, sure. Just, just tell me like king you b5 take. And then you bring your king here, for example. I go here, you play king d7, I play here, you play king d6, I play king b2, you play king b5, I am just waiting, I, I could do something but I am I'm happy to wait and then you play a4, I will still wait, I will not take. a3, a3 and king a1 and this seems like a beautiful fortress, uh, absolutely no way unless now something like c4 king goes back again where king because okay if you play c4 and i take with the d pawn you come king c5 you have d3 and then your king is entering all of a sudden yeah sure that could be risky but uh, i could just take with this pawn <coughs> b into c4 yeah. and then how are you going to make progress ah maybe do you think this is a position of Zugzwang? King a2? If it was white to play here, I think white would have been short of moves. And then let's say if white has to play here, somehow we get this magically, this position. Then b3 and I think this is perhaps winning. Yeah, this is winning for white, black. Well, some... Um, Okay, uh, Dr. M. G. M. says, I didn't know that you were covering the candidates. Yeah, I'm, I'm in India. I'm not over there in Berlin. But yeah, I just found the last two rounds to be too tempting to just not cover something. So yeah, doing uh, some live commentary here. <sighs> mm. Okay. So what guys, first of all, do you think that Ding Liren has any chances here? I feel that here C4 might be some kind of like, like for example, I wait here. I, I'm just trying to triangulate something like when the king is on A2, I want to play C4. So something like this, king on A2 and now play C4. This is my idea. Uh, too many ifs, I mean, I, I made a lot of waiting you moves and stuff. Ah, you don't take at no. all. That's the point. Yeah, take just take just take wait. Yeah, there's no need to take. Okay. YP Wine says, how to improve my chest strength? I've been 1300 for a year now. I think the best way to improve if you're 1300 is to first of all, find good material. I can suggest that. But more importantly, uh, try to look at your games and see where you're going wrong. Is it the opening? Is it the middle game? Is it the end game? Are you missing tactics or are you making positionally weak moves? If you can be objective about it and understand what your weaknesses are, that's the fastest way to improve according to me. Yeah, this game will be drawn. Yes. So, Karyakin uh, Ding is a draw. That's what I feel. So, I guess we don't need to look at that game any further. Um, by the way, some of our moves from Karuana, Grishchuk Karuana are proving to be the correct ones. It's good news. Um, yeah, we, we left it here and then C4, B5 was played, A4 was also played and A6. So this is the position we have. And as I said, now the threat is always to play d4. So I have a feeling that white is doing well. Just imagine here, oh, sorry, black is doing well. He's thinking of d4. For example, I go f3 and already d4. Ah, okay, bishop, e, bishop e4 is the problem. Yeah, that seems like the trouble because now after rook c8. You can just take and take on d4. That's a piece up. Uh, that's a pawn up. So, yeah, maybe rook d8 first 
should be better or rook c8 first <coughs> then i have bishop f2 so rook d8 bishop f2 this is what we're discussing i think this is what might happen um Aryan Polakre says white can eat the h3 pawn and then he will reach on a2 on time. Yeah, yeah, sure. Just if you want to take h2, you can. Even if you don't take, it's a draw. So that one looks like a draw. Um, yeah. So this game also black looks to be doing fine, but it's far from uh, over. And now before we take a break, we should have a look at Kramnik's. Um, brilliant play it seems against Mamedyarov. Uh, a lot of things have happened in that game since we last left. That's the one where we left at c6 and then bishop d3 was played because you want to put push e4 so knight f6 e4 e5 and finally he was able to play the move e5 to liberate his bishop bishop e3 Queen b4 and knight takes e5. So uh, white has recovered a pawn, but Mamediaro still keeps his pawn edge by taking another pawn. Now bishop f4 was played. Interesting stuff. So can you take can you take another pawn? No, of course not, because bishop c4. So what do you do here? Grishchuk has 4 minutes to Karuana's 20. I don't think uh, time is such a big problem because the position looks pretty even and easy to play. So time will not be such a big factor according to me. Uh, Nagesh T says suggests a middle game book. Right now I would say two books come to my mind immediately. Reassess Your Chess by Jeremy Silman and the other one is... Um, if you are you, what your level is i think if it's say around 1800 or so then um, understanding the chess tactics from scratch by martin veteschnik i like that very much uh, yeah cedric london says enterprising chess by kramnik sure uh, do you think that a move like g5 is possible seems really bad to tell you the truth but uh, if you take on g5 i have queen into b queen into e5 at least here um, but maybe bishop c4 is very strong in this position or even knight into f7 some some tricks like this could be possible YP Wines asks me, did you improve very quickly if you were a 1300 to 1400 player? Uh, actually back then the ratings began from 2000. So even though my rate level was something like 1400, I still got a rating in 2000. So lucky back then, but rating, getting a rating was not as easy as it is today. <coughs> By the way, yeah, yeah, I just forgot to mention that G5 doesn't look so great because of Knight C4 also. So yeah, that does not. Uh, true okay so bishop f4 and the question is what if I just develop my bishop simple move what is happening ah rook b1 that's the point you want to take on a2 and then take on b7 so uh, Yeah, we have some few questions and moves that are being suggested but here I have a feeling that Kramnik has interesting chances I'm not able to assess this position so well because Bishop c4 I'm sure is a big threat you must do something against it at the same time developing this runs into something like this and then once again I think white has very good activity here so not so easy to understand uh, what's going on um, yeah maybe it's around 
uh, dynamically balanced but this is the most interesting game to follow so right now it's around uh, 10 p.m in india i think we should take a short break and i'll be coming back in around let's say half an hour max but i would like to come back in 20 minutes 10 20 from now so thank you for tuning in and i will be back at 10 20 uh, see you guys So, Internet. so hello guys uh, I hope that you are able to uh, watch this stream again I have with me uh, finally a guest on this show uh, Amruta welcome thank you guest <laughs> <laughs> Amruta has uh, been always sitting next to me but for the last half uh, last part of this candidates we have her live over here and uh, you're not feeling too well yes yes but i'm excited about the last round okay so who do you think is going to be the candidate today karwana maybe yeah so uh, uh shivam yadav is saying are you going to have your dinner <laughs> <laughs> no we had a quick early dinner at seven o'clock yeah so we we are here and uh, by the way this was the position Grishchuk is white okay. Karuana is black and here um, Bishop G5 was played by Fabiano and uh, Bishop F2 and here was a very interesting moment he attacked the E5 pawn and now Bishop F5 Bishop C5 what would you guys played here I mean in the game Fabi went Rook F D8 but is there some other possibilities that you would consider Maybe an exchange sacrifice, knight e5, rook, bishop f8, king f8. Yes, sure. I think knight e5 uh, would have been uh, would have been possible. Even bishop e5, I think, is very strong um, because after bishop f8, rook no, f8. No, f4, uh, bishop into c3. Well. C3 is yeah. hanging. Also, rook f4. So I think this position uh, is very good for for black. And Fabiano didn't go for it, yeah. which is uh, a bit surprising. I think he's really uh, looking for a, a draw, draw here. Yeah. Uh, so, Rook F D eight, Bishop D six was played, defending E five. Bishop G three, Rook E two. Now G five. So we, you know, Grishchuk always uh, coming under time pressure. So final part of the game, King F one, seven, Rook E eight. And this is the position that we have on the board right now. Around even, yeah? Yeah. But still in time pressure, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think last move after uh, Rook A C8, I think Rook A1 was played by White. And then Rook F D8. So, yeah, it's not so clear. Maybe White is pressing a bit because he has the A file here also uh, ab is always in his hands so yeah but at any point of time black will have this exchange sacrifice and his central pawns will be uh, very strong i feel uh -huh. so you mean to say that if i if i just uh, say make a waiting move you will sacrifice here it's possible it's a bit early because you will have okay bishop into d6 a into b5 a into b5 but yeah, a7 is controlled, a5 is controlled. And rook a6? e5. e5, rook b6. And maybe you have d4, uh, d4 and already a lot of play. Yeah, yeah. It's, it looks dangerous. Sure. So Aryan Polakre, who is a good friend, uh, he says that Kramnik versus Mamed is much yeah, more yes. interesting. Okay. So, so let's, let's go, go there. And let's try to see what's going yeah, on yeah, yeah, for because sure. <laughs> I, I when I left, last left uh, he took he had taken the pawn on b7 Kramnik uh, and at that point he was so this position uh, not queen a2 but bishop e6 and then rook b1 queen a2 rook b7 bishop c5 and king g2 rook e8 was played and here I don't know Kramnik just went h3 seems doesn't seem into yeah. the spirit of the position suddenly bishop, bishop takes f2. f2 that's how what sharp is this guy is mamediaro because the point i guess is that if you take here mm -hmm. then already bishop into h3 is something yeah. you have to consider 
and uh, king g1 you can't take so king g1 first and queen a1 check no yeah queen a1 check queen a1 now you don't want to go to h2 uh, because no, of rook e5 king into h3 and then you have uh, queen, queen h1, h1. Uh, queen h2 rook h5 yeah. yeah this seems winning and if you take back then knight g4 but you have to be careful because there is a mate mm. here but i don't see mm. any way in which you can move your king and not come yeah. under the check so Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Why bishop takes f2 is what Aditya Srivastava is asking. Well, that's exactly what we are analyzing here. Uh, so, take queen a1, bishop f1 could be possible here. Um, knight into e4 maybe? Yeah, knight e4. But do you think that uh, Mamediaro calculated all of this? Because now, uh, in order, you have to be in touch with the bishop on f1, so queen mm -hmm. e2. Yeah, it looks scary. It looks scary for sure, but is there a concrete refutation? Maybe queen d4 should. Right. Yeah, queen d4 looks good. Or, or maybe, f yeah, queen d4. Maybe knight g4 here seems like. Knight yeah, you can you can just take it, so that doesn't work. No, but that was good. What you said, queen d4 check, and I don't see what he will do. Next. By the way, one very important point is that after here, if queen a1, there is rook b1 coming back, so that shouldn't work. <coughs> by the way, so after bishop h3, now you need to find out what's going on. To bishop h3, king g1. Uh, yeah. Do you think Still that queen is? that he queen has uh, sacrificed five, yeah exactly and then take, check. take and take here yeah, no but i don't think it is enough take takes knight g4 check. king f king e2 he will go knight into e5 rook a7 yeah this should be a draw maybe yeah drawish why not but then I black should try to be better not draw yeah possible so there are more possibilities here actually. Bishop uh, f2, queen f2, maybe. Yeah, bishop h3, king g1, I think this is all forced. This one here, maybe there are some other possibilities. This point, yeah. Um, queen a1 also seems fine if he wants to go rook b1. Yeah, but queen, queen a1, c rook b1 doesn't, doesn't seem to solve anything, so. Why not? Queen c3, now the idea is. too slow is it yeah it looks i mean you don't really have a threat and okay it's possible i mean you are threatening rookie five but i don't know Maybe yeah not much not not the best it looks i think you take and this exchange queen into f2 was played i guess uh by and and that's what yeah, happened queen into f2 so I Queen yeah. rookie take take and rookie five was played and i guess so this is heading lose, towards lose. a draw yeah black shouldn't lose this because but even if you try take actually, here no i don't think you can even try way. because you keep this f7 point guarded then you bring no, your he king. will uh, he won't take on d3 no come on that mm. that would just be even take take and that's nothing um, so Rahul Narona asks has any game ended yet well I don't think so because Ding Liren the game which we thought would definitely end in a draw has actually gone on for quite some moves no of course I think Ding will push a lot and in pressure <laughs> it's possible that Karyakin will yeah but I was under the impression that that position was really a dead draw uh, because the knight was so superior for example uh, just going back here this position of course everything got exchanged uh, and then Ding uh, Karyakin took his knight here my question was why not keep your knight on d5 do you think Karyakin was trying for a win no <laughs> I, it's, 
No, there's no person. point, yeah. But then otherwise, here you just keep your knight on d5 and then just wait. It's not so easy to win this. I don't see a way. But he went knight f5 and he allowed this break of uh, d5. d5. So, um, yeah. Karuana is winning, that's what people are saying. So, that means that Karuana has the best chance now. True. Can we check that out? Okay, but just Maybe very quickly uh, coming here. Still, it seems like Kram, uh, Karyakin has good control over the position, but now now c4, c4, c4 king c6. Because you have to take with this, yeah. and now okay, this looks yeah. really scary. This isn't but winning. No, 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 no. The point is, if I move my king here, king just king comes and it, it defends here and these two pawns can yeah. be defended by the white king and the knight handles everything else yeah not so easy not so easy uh i think but a4 maybe a, uh, is going to be tried at some point but then you are risking a bit too much not really because knight d2 perhaps three then knight e4 again or maybe knight c4 yeah. No, 94. Yeah, not much. Ago. Possible. This is possible. But this looks b uh, the best try. Yeah. What else? Which one? Right yeah, now? yeah. This looks like at least a4 has to be played, I guess, by Ding. So or let's. What if he just waits? King c6, king b5, and. Uh, yeah, king c6 and king coming to b5 and a4 is possible, but. I guess as we had discussed, yeah, I'll uh, give knight d6 check, uh, or or even just waiting. I guess should be okay. Do, not doing True. anything. Okay, that's uh, another defense. <laughs> yeah, so let's go to uh, Grishchuk game. Uh, it's right. very surprise. It's it's not surprising that Grishchuk has made a mistake because he comes under time pressure and he always. You know, you can't keep making the best moves when you have 30 seconds left on the clock. So, uh, let's go quickly to the game between Grishchuk and Karuana, and Karuana here. <coughs> so, um, we had left at this point rook a1, rook fd8 and then rook a2 was played. Mm -hmm. Sorry, bishop b1 was played here, which looks very uh, yeah, fishy. Fishy move, rook d7, rook a3, d4 came in, mm. a b a b c d knight d4, yeah and already black seems to be getting a lot of play, yeah, and the c rook k2 too and uh, yeah c3, c2, Karwana can win in time trouble, uh, Shivam Yadav says how can I support your channel Sagar, it's a good question. <laughs> getting more subscribers for sure for the beginning <laughs> yeah if you can get in more subscribers nothing like it uh, spread the word uh, that uh, that there is chess base india which is broadcasting live commentary also having very interesting interviews i think that's the best way you can support us for now uh, and if you have any interesting videos you could submit it for sure um Shivam Yadav says, Ding's bishop is a classic example of bad bishop. Well, it's a bad bishop, but you get two pawns in return. So, that's something <laughs> for, for sure. Uh, by the way, so rook ea2, let's assume you're playing against Ding Liren. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, against Grishchuk here. Well, what would you play? I will definitely consider c3. Okay. C3. By, by the way, you could also think about sacrificing here, right? Right now, maybe not needed. First, I will go C3. What are you because, going to do? Because my problem is that here, uh, if you do, if you play C3, then I have Bishop C5, I think, and but then you block the <coughs> C5. Okay. Then Bishop E5, maybe. Yeah. Is the yeah, and that opposite color. Even if you play Bishop D4, I. I don't think it's very good. Sorry? Bishop? Bishop into e5, bishop into d4 is... No, rook yeah. into c3, does that work? I think so. No, uh, I'll just, rook d1 check will be there. I'll play knight, uh, 
where yeah where do you move your knight that's a good question rook c1 would come back so knight f5 rook c1 yeah knight f5 rook c1 knight e3 check bishop into e3 ah yeah you are just supporting that's a blunder uh, uh, but yeah okay it's not complete okay, blunder but it would be even, would be even. but i uh, don't get anything from that sure so maybe i was thinking you could just take and then there would be an intermediate check first to stop king f6 mm -hmm. and then i could go back king e8 and then takes and take bishop d6 or king f8 maybe is more accurate here and then ed bishop d6 i don't think that uh, black can be worse here c pawn is very strong yeah and b4 is hanging yeah Suraj Gaire says, uh, "How can I accelerate at chess? I'm 1280 player. Any suggestions for me? Well, lot of suggestions. First of all, uh, if you have a good coach, of course that's great. But good books that will always help. Uh, reassess your chess. I like Power Play DVDs by Daniel King. Wonderful source. And then play a lot of tournaments. Analyze your games." these are the small things which will make a huge difference uh, i think in your level of play okay uh vedu panesar says uh, this tournament would give a good competition to zurich 1953 mm. <laughs> do you think so i i was under the impression that this candidates was it was interesting but not like super interesting but uh, yeah definitely there were moments uh, when in every round you had some interesting games coming up but maybe zurich 1953 bit too much one of the most famous candidate tournaments uh, that was played aditya shrivastava says why not knight c6 and then b4 uh, in this position maybe you just going knight c6 possible yes that's a good move uh, e5 is also hanging, hanging here b4 rook into d6 knight b4 is hanging yeah good move uh, i think aditya uh so normally the backward moves are difficult to consider so yes by the way we have had a lot of moves i think uh karuana has kind of misplayed it uh, knight c6 was played by him bishop, bishop e4 bishop e5 bishop c6 <coughs> okay rook d6 bishop into b5 <coughs> and now rook d1 king e2 <coughs> rook g1 okay amruta is not feeling so well maybe it's time for you to take some break uh, we'll take up your mic <coughs> Oops. uh so uh thanks uh, a lot to amruta for coming she was not feeling well but she anyway said that today being the last day uh, she would come here harshit agarwal says can you analyze good games of 1900 plus players yeah of course uh, i i would love to do it at some point but uh, i am considering to to do something much uh, bigger than just analyze the games uh, on live stream to actually have some kind of more training material so that it's something in the pipeline um and we, that's a good idea uh aryan says amruta did your best okay thanks a lot um, it's great i should be happy to know uh by the way rook g1 now g2 is hanging and c3 c2 is a threat hmm so what are you going to play that's the question it doesn't look so easy yogi says i am uh, 1182 i am reading silman complete end game course yes uh, that's a great book for you i think i agree uh, sparsh bansal says any guesses on who will be challenging carlson i think fabiano that seems like the the thing that will happen today fabiano uh, seems to be better and at the same time the other games nothing much i think ding liren is still trying to break through while kramnik has uh, cr uh, has lost all his chances against mamedyarov i mean he never really had 
uh, winning position or something but yeah he is kind of this is where we are right now uh, over here bishop e2 and this is where the game stands i think it's just uh, even mm. and uh, nothing special so draw looks likely i don't think mamediaro can win this and uh, so yeah karuana well on track for his um, getting to the match against Carlson last year i was there in moscow in the 2016 candidates last round karuana loses the game comes out of the hall uh, depressed Ka karyakin comes is the local guy everyone is shouting and happy for him and then Ka karuana gives a nice smile and you feel for the guy you know he's so close and uh, this year he somehow managed to pull it pull himself through so amazing uh jackie jane says keep up the good work thanks a lot jackie uh so shivam yadav says so you don't take financial support on patreon for subscribers like other youtubers not yet not yet we haven't taken any financial support yet um we are just trying to to so indian chess so i'm i'm not sure if we would be taking any uh support from the patrons but yeah at some point if it is a good idea we'll do that um shivam yadav says i'm already dreaming about magnus versus mm -hmm. karwana now would be a good time to apply for uk visa and your flight tickets for november the dates are already fixed what are the dates for the world championship match i think 6 to 26 november 6 to 26 november that's what it is in london so <coughs> good time to to be there um okay so let's focus on the game of uh, karuana if uh, he is able to get something out of that against grishchuk he seems his it's an opposite color bishop position but uh, his pieces are definitely doing much better than grishchuk's so um, yeah this is where we have right now king f6 was the last move c3 c2 is on cards so i have to be careful about those things uh rohit sarkar says what is your favorite thing about chess a uh, good question actually i think my favorite thing is uh, just that it's like two people can sit opposite each other play the game without knowing their language without knowing the other person is like an amazing way to communicate and to get people together uh, for example i have a friend who cannot speak he cannot hear i can play chess with him and we both enjoy that game i have a friend who cannot walk you know he is 100% uh, handicapped uh i could play chess with him chess is a game which actually goes beyond uh, physical uh, problems it goes beyond any language barriers regional barriers and that's why i think it's a beautiful sport it's it's just amazing in, i mean it happens in all the sports but in chess even more um mm -hmm. uh, okay so <coughs> yes last time as shivam says i was in candidates and the last mm. day i was shooting everything amruta took some nice pictures <coughs> i'm sure in berlin also it's going to be electric mood um when karuana wins by the way king f6 i think was the 40th move so both the players have got a lot of time uh, to assess the situation so they will think a lot uh, any game i think all the games have passed the 40 move stage and we have by the way uh, reached this interesting position in the game between uh mamediarov uh, sorry which one is it yeah ding liren and uh, kramnik in which karyakin oh, sorry karyakin yeah yeah uh, 
Karyakin, I am just very tired. Uh, Karyakin and uh, Ding Liren. And in that game, A4 was played over here. I don't know, somewhere around here. Bishop E7, King C1, A4 was played and King A2. So this is the defense which we had spoken about. And uh, Karyakin has been able to get that in. I don't think there is any way to break this position. Should be a draw. Ankesh says, what is the main reason that chess is not popular as cricket in India? Now, very interesting. First of all, I feel that uh, chess has not been made into a spectator friendly sport. So first of all, that has to be done. Secondly, many, many people hate uh, cricket because they say that other sports don't get their due. If I think about it, more closely, I realized that uh, BCCI, which is the uh, uh, Board of Cricket Control in India, did did a very good job of popularizing the sport. You know, it's like everyone knows who the player is. If there is a new guy on the block, everyone knows about it. Uh, in fact, recently when I was filling, trying to see the Arjuna Award form, uh, you know, they they had all these sports. Uh, which were in the Olympics and then special mention about cricket everywhere because it's not a part of Olympics and no special mention of chess or anything so you know they took special care that cricket gets its due everywhere and that's what we are seeing right now uh, if, if chess is uh, taken good care of as a sport if we are able to popularize it I don't see why it couldn't become popular and um, well chess base India is working in that direction and I hope that uh, in India, chess will become as popular as cricket one day. That's a dream, yeah. And as Amruta says, one more dream is to get chess into the Olympics. That's one more thing. If chess gets into the Olympics, then you lot of people get interested in the sport. Suddenly, you have, say, a guy like Pragnananda winning the gold and everyone like, let's uh, put more money into chess, let's invest into chess and then it becomes more popular. Uh, Okay, so the Umkar says there are not many smart people in India. Well, <laughs> not so. Uh, can't, can't be as simple as that, but yeah, okay. Uh, Sparsh Bansal says, how can we become a part of Team Chess Base India? Well, I would say just write to us at chessbaseindia at gmail.com and we'll take it up from there. I uh, would be happy to have people who would like to work with us and popularize this sport in our country a uh, lot of things to be done so definitely any help is most welcome um, okay so yeah i think overall we have the results pretty pretty simply out uh, mamediaro will draw with kramnik and uh, karuan uh, dingleren will draw with karyakin and I think Karuana, I'm not sure about the assessment of this position uh, over here, <coughs> but uh, he cannot be worse, at least this one. I mean, he will either win or it's a draw. So, yep, that means that Karuana will be the challenger. Uh, we don't need to wait for long. So, if you guys have any questions, maybe I could wait on for another few minutes before I call it a day. Uh, it was very nice having you here. Um, I think a lot of more things uh, that will be done in the future uh, on this Chess Base India channel. So my suggestion is please subscribe to this channel and become a part of it. Um, There's a lot of things to um, do together. Yeah, Golden Square says, does Chess Base India need web developers? Yes. We need it, we need uh, coders, we need web developers. If you could write to us at chessbaseindia at gmail, that would be wonderful. Uh, Harshit Agarwal says, Fabi is better choice to dethrone Carlson than Karyakin. Yes, I think so. F Fabiano Caruana will make it very exciting. Um, he'll prepare hard, he'll be motivated. Um, Carlson has lost to him many times in the past. So it'll be fun, two young guys. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think Karuana is two years younger to Carlson. He's 1992 born. 
while Carlson is uh, 90, 90 born. So, um, yeah, two years separate them. Uh, so, both sort of youngsters will be interesting to follow uh, the world championship. Okay, so Okay, mm -hmm. I'm getting new subscribers because of you, Sagar. That's what Omkar says. Well, wonderful. <laughs> Nothing like, uh, you know, growing uh, chess channels growing. I would be very happy to do that. Uh, Ar Aryan asks, what is the top class chess player's routine? Ooh, that's a nice qu uh, question. Um, very difficult to know, but I think that um, when I was at the Tal Memorial recently and... Uh, uh, was uh, interacting with a lot of top players because I was staying at the same hotel. Uh, I think it's very important for them to have the right balance of physical fitness as well as chess during a tournament. So, um, when, I, when I was at the World Cup as well, I would see Peter Swidler or some other GM <coughs> go to the gym regularly, uh, working out. Mm, they know that physical fitness is very important. So, they, they devote time to it. Uh, that's one, one very important thing. And they have a usually a fixed schedule. That's why you will see that in tournaments where the rounds begin at different times is not very ideal for these players because they get into a flow. They have the breakfast at the same time. Then they kind of take rest or they prepare. Then they go for a walk, something like this. I think Anand loves to go for walks. That's what uh, we have seen. Uh, okay, who's your favorite? That's what uh, Jackie Jain has asked uh, as a chess player. Very difficult to say uh, who's my favorite. I like uh, Wesley so very much. Good friend of mine. Um, I hope next year will be, will be better for him uh, at the, the candidates. Yeah, of course, uh, Anish Giri is, is a, a wonderful friend as well. So, uh, right now he might be not so happy with uh, the tournament of Kramnik, but he will be playing in Shamkir very soon and uh, we'll all be following that. Um, <coughs> yes, uh, how to improve without a coach, says Vinayak. Well, that's always the case. Uh, I think uh, improving without a coach is never easy um, because a coach expedites your process if you want to learn let's say a rook end game and if there is a coach he will immediately tell you you know put your rook here behind the pawn and it would be good while if you want to learn on your own you first open a book you set up a position you don't know how to win that you read it you try to understand mm -hmm. it it takes more time but it's my personal belief that if you understand that thing that you have read uh, you will actually become much uh, you will get much more knowledge than having learning it from the coach I mean it will become more uh, solid kind of a knowledge for you uh, but if you want to improve fast I think it's important to have a coach a good coach which is very rare uh, I, I my definition of a good coach is when a coach really cares for you you know if, if a coach really is interested in you he will not kind of say okay what's the time you know one hour session that's over uh, I'm going sort of thing. He will try to spend more time with you. He'll try to help you improve. If you get a coach like that, don't leave him. Yeah, he's he'll help you become a good player. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Prabhat Tripathi says I'm the Yasser Sairavan of Indian chess. Well, his voice is just tremendous. I mean, I listen to him. I'll tell you that uh, I have listened to his so many videos on YouTube which he has done for this um, St. Louis Chess Club. Not the live commentary he does now, but also these lectures that he gives. So much fun to listen to him. I mean, the way he talks, the way he explains, the effortlessly he, he does things. I, I really love it. Um, so, nowhere close to him as of now, but definitely uh, he is um, my kind of a dream I would like to be like him uh, by the way was <clears throat> one question that was asked was what are the foreign tournaments GM opens that you would recommend abroad 
uh, I think that there are many good tournaments happening everywhere but uh, definitely Spain uh, circuit which is coming up in Catalan uh, Catalan circuit in Barcelona which will be happening from 25th of June five tournaments at a stretch you play you stay at one central location uh, in Barcelona and play all five of them one after the other seems really good I think the cost would be somewhere around the range of one to one and a half lakh rupees and you can get to play five good events uh, and chess base india power will help you to plan this trip so if you go to power.chessbase.in you get the number you can call over there and they'll help you to book your stay flight everything i think these five events have been very good i personally uh, made my im norm final norm there i became an im there it's it's a good tournament to play that will be in uh, from 25th of june this so after three months um yeah i mean in general catalan circuit is becoming very popular but my general belief is that you don't need excellent tournaments like for example uh if you go to a tournament like gibraltar or somewhere you do get good players but uh you know in any tournament if you play well you have chances to make norms increase rating and everything so you don't need to exactly go to these world class events first you can start off with the small ones spain greece circuit there's also the czech circuit so many different places where you could play yeah so harshit agarwal says anish giri the draw saga uh, yeah a lot of time so uh Rahul Norona says thank you for streaming this well i'm glad you enjoyed it um and uh, i guess there is not much moving on the chess board right i mean uh, kramnik has brought his king all the way to c5 but i don't see still any progress being made by him uh, while karwana grishuk is still stuck up and karyakin ding has ended in a draw so that's done and uh, mamediaro will draw and so well that's true karwana becomes the challenger uh, for sure <coughs> okay guys so i hope that i was able to answer a lot of questions i'm just going up and checking if i miss something uh is there Yeah Vinayak Sutar says I enjoyed very much press conferences of Grishchuk yes definitely they were very very much fun uh he he has this unique sense of humor where he's very serious and suddenly cracks a joke I have been trying to interview Grishchuk in many events and he's very very kind you know he's always ready for an interview speaks nicely to you nice guy overall uh like him very much mm-hmm. <coughs> coach konatham snehil says can you coach me well i'm not training anyone right now i don't teach but um, well i hope that i can make these interactive uh, training sessions uh, over here where we could discuss about <coughs> chess if if you are interested maybe i could do that um, in the coming days and we could all join in together and discuss some interesting chess together um, yeah Okay Shivam says good night that's uh, that's the right thing to do go to sleep and get ready for Carlson Caruana in 6 uh, months from now 7 <laughs> 7 months from now yeah Konatham Snehil yes uh, can you come up with a book uh, quality chess india has come to india now so we will definitely be thinking of getting indian authors to to write so yeah definitely i wanted to write a book <coughs> about uh, how to become a gm but the difficult part is in becoming a gm not writing a book so <laughs> I, i'll try my best to to get my final norm and also reach 2500 and then would write that book <coughs> yeah okay so An- angom says good night uh, thanks so much for bringing us this take care So Angom uh, lives in um, Assam he he works for Chess Base and uh, wonderful person so nice uh, of you to join in 
I, I just love this live streaming because people from different regions can come together. Uh, that's very nice. Uh, Amit Pandey says, Karuana won. Wow. Did he already win the game? It's, uh, no, I don't think so. It's still going on. So, he didn't win still. Uh, Prabhat says, uh, thank you for taking responsibility on your shoulder to make chess more popular in India. Well, it's, it's the natural thing to do. You know, when you like something very much, you want others to also enjoy it. So, I just doing this. Uh, I just enjoy. Every day you get up and you enjoy your work. That's the best thing that can happen. Yes, Farid says India will soon become a dominant chess country. Yes, for sure. That's That goes without saying. Mahar Deka, welcome. A bit late maybe, but uh, nonetheless, welcome to this uh, show. Uh, yeah, I had a blog, Chess is Life, uh, but now I just work full time for Chess Base India and yeah, that's like our baby Amruta and mine. We both are working very hard on it. We have a team of 14 people, all of us working very hard to towards making chess popular in India. So we don't get time to do anything else i mean uh, it's like a full time thing uh do you have plans of uh, future plans of indian chess league yes there are some things coming up so stay tuned for that by the way snehil asks you amruta can you come up a, with a book like david lada has come no i don't think so that way but i I think I would like to come up with a book where Sagar's articles and uh, my pictures both are there together mm -hmm. because uh, <laughs> uh, it should have the explanation of those moments. That is what I feel. So it will go well when we do something together. Okay. Yeah, we should do that. Uh, some people say that we should make a compilation of all the nice articles on Chess Base and Chess Base India. But uh, well. It's something we will think of. Uh, Sparsh Bansal says job profiles available uh, on Chess Base India. Yeah, a lot of them. Uh, if you are good at anything, including let's say uh, coding, uh, web developer. If app. you are, uh, yeah, app developer. Yeah, app developer, or you can uh, do some good social media marketing. If there are a lot of things that can be done to make chess popular. Just write to us at chessbaseindia at gmail.com and, and we are sure that and of course if you are a good writer that's that's that would be wonderful. So yeah. Um, so anyway guys thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, it was great fun interacting with you and um, everyone's asking you to come to the camera once and uh, so it will be by the way, Amruta, you can just tell about what we guys are doing right now, uh, about the one year journey and then we'll, we'll uh, take the leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we started our journey on 27th November and uh, <clears throat> now we are almost three and a half, uh, no, four months almost. So uh, I think it was a very interesting uh, journey where we met a lot of people, a uh, lot of places we could spread chess i mean we could achieve our aim right now i'm ill but that's okay <laughs> and uh, we are going to take a camp next uh, after two days it will be a blindfold camp so uh, we want to take this everywhere uh, at different places and would surely like to meet you all whoever is there online right now yeah it's very nice that you all are writing to us and uh, it's like we are talking I was thinking when I was sitting besides it doesn't feel that uh, you know Sagar is it feels that Sagar is speaking with all of you so uh, that is really nice uh, yeah keep watching <laughs> and we would really like to grow more so help us to spread this on Facebook YouTube Instagram and everywhere possible <laughs> yes and uh, so being homeless is a great joy because you don't have to uh, you know wake up to the same place every day <laughs> you can travel anywhere so someday we are in Delhi someday we are in Bangalore someday we are in Chennai someday in Mumbai 
it's like uh, yeah every yeah. place is like a home yes and traveling is a lot and for us every security check in we have to like uh, <laughs> show them every wire <laughs> cameras and okay that's the uh, little boring part but that happens only for 10 minutes <laughs> yeah yeah of course <laughs> uh, we took once i think 13 uh, flights in a month which was a bit too much uh, for us but well that's a part of the thing uh, and a uh, few questions were when is the blind <coughs> camp uh, it's after 2 days in mandya which is a small town in karnataka and someone asked are you coming to kolkata <coughs> open yes we are uh, coming to kolkata yes, open for sure uh, so um <laughs> yes so there are a lot of uh, things on the plan there are eight more months to go being homeless so we'll go to um olympiad for sure we are planning to go to world juniors we are planning to go to commonwealth in delhi uh lot of events we are going also we want to go to and of course karnataka state which yes, is yes karnataka state we will be there for 4 days our entire team of 6 four more people two of us and four more will be there so if you guys are in karnataka do come there um by the way one question was asked to you do you like the movie pk because i think the actress had a similar haircut <laughs> oh no 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 this haircut is just uh, traveling like travel light <laughs> for that reason <laughs> yeah and uh, so that you don't have to keep cutting hair so yeah i cut my hair myself <laughs> yeah yeah she does cut her hair in the in the on her own yeah so yeah one question was when will be the next chess base india blitz the last one had too many glitches by the way i would like to inform the last one was Uh, a test tournament that we had held we had clearly mentioned it and that is why we were testing if mobile phones can be used to play yeah that's why there were glitches the next one will be flawless we are planning to hold it very soon uh, and uh, get ready for it it's going to be something big coming yes. up yeah uh, so kilin satra you are yeah. not covering iit bombay event well, our little uh, master uh, autanshu who yeah. writes who's just 13 years old but already writes like a gm uh, will be there and he'll be covering that event yes uh, you will also find uh, quality chess books over there so yes. <laughs> sure i have my je exam on 8th of april i live in the hostel and right now i had to lie to my mom <laughs> that i'm studying <laughs> well Uh, this is a good lie though <laughs> yeah i i hope that now you go and study um yeah when when i was uh, doing my ca examination my biggest uh, incentive to study was that i can quickly clear my ca and get back to chess so that's the reason why i feel you should also uh study well get done with your iit and then start playing chess <laughs> so does the icf sponsor you sparsh bansal is asking uh, or do you manage the expenses on on your own no we we manage it on our own uh, aicf has been supportive to indian chess that's the best that we can ask for they don't need to support individuals like us um they are doing a great job and i'm i'm really proud of bharat singh and the entire team uh, sure. they're doing great work for indian chess yeah a lot of people suggested to look for sponsorship for this travel but uh, I think uh, we would like to do this on our own expenses. <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, by the way, C D Subne says, please analyze games well. We analyzed it for a lot of time, and we were about to leave, so we just having a small chat over here. Uh, the games are actually interesting, but uh, already I think the result is out. Uh, it's going to be Karuana who's winning. Sure. Mm, when are you playing Sagar? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's a very tough Thought question. Provoking. I think I want to play somewhere soon. Hope maybe Commonwealth. If you can. should play any tournament you play, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Amit Pandey, did you clear in very first attempt? Yes, I cleared in the first attempt, uh, and I think chess helped me a lot. So hmm. mm, yeah, it helped me to concentrate. It helped me to uh, sit for long hours for my CA examination, and it was not very difficult. Um. Okay, guys. So let's uh, take a break now, and we'll sure. we'll call it a day. We'll meet you soon. Thank you all for tuning in, and uh, good day. Bye. Bye. Good night. <laughs>